Welcome to my talk on eco and sustainable organic architecture. Eco architecture for us means connecting the user to his environment, to his nature, to nature around. Sustainable architecture optimizes the life cycle interaction between the user and his environment and the building and the environment. Connecting and combining is very much at the core of what I will be talking about at the core of our philosophy. We connect natural materials with modern materials, inside with outside. We combine natural materials with modern engineering science or traditional approaches with modern space feelings. Connecting is what makes us happy what makes us being able to embrace a place as our home if we can connect to it. The Beatles song that was very powerful I think is going he's a fool who plays it cool by making his life a little colder. You know cool is one of the so important modern terms in architecture, everything has to be cool, but cool has a danger. Cool separates, it makes everything colder. So we're not going down that path. We think it's a lot more important to embrace, to bring things together, to connect. So before I was talking about connecting as being a centerpiece of our design philosophy. How do we create connections? Basically, there's two means that we have. It's the design and it's the choice of materials. In terms of design, we focus on organic design, meaning free-flowing curves that integrate our buildings into the environment where they are. That means you have to observe your environment, you have to look for the lines for the, the leaf or of a mountain ridge or of a river flow and then find something that corresponds to these lines and, and represent this in your buildings. It's usually not square. Um, we find this is something that is slowly coming up in architecture, like Saadid architects do very interesting organic design. And of course, Frank Lloyd Wright started with it. But then there are still movements that try to keep the connection of the buildings and the environment far apart, like Bauhaus, where there is nothing personal, where there's nothing related to the place. And uh, we are on the other side of the spectrum. We want people to come into the place and feel we that our architecture enriched the place through the design that we offer to the place. Natural materials automatically create a connection by touching our heart. They uh, are not only beautiful, but also functional. They create well against heat, against cold. They are noise insulating. They last long. They're nice to touch, nice to look at. Our natural materials of choice are bamboo and earth. Because of these reasons, these materials have been around a long time and sometimes got a bad reputation because people think they are weak, they don't last long. Um, but we find that by infusing knowledge of the 21st century, these materials actually have inert capabilities that exceed the strength of materials that are existing in the market that exceed the, the positive characteristics of those materials. I was led to sustainability through the convergence of two paths. First is the path of observer of spaces and their sometimes devastating influence on the well-being of the user. Second, to the path of the builder and maintainer of properties. It didn't take me very long to become inherently dissatisfied 
with the shortcomings of the commonly available construction materials. And uh, I was increasingly confronted with the enormous amount of waste inherent in these materials as well. So when I was renovating a beach house for the family, I found very quickly that concrete and steel in their commonly available quality were by far not the perfect and long-lasting materials that they are um, advertised to be. You know, the, every time I went there, I had to repair something. Uh, steel got rusty. The rooms were still hot because these materials don't insulate very well. And that also increased the um, deterioration of everything else inside. You know, windows and doors couldn't be closed easily. And so I quickly found that these materials have a lot of disadvantages. And the main reason for using them was because they were available in the market. And that is it. And, that, and because everybody else used them. But at the same time, I found I was confronted with bamboo and earth architecture during that time. And I, I saw these materials are right there. They insulate better. They couldn't care less about salty air. In a matter of fact, we use salt to preserve bamboo. So it will last even longer. They have the same tensile and load bearing capabilities. And they insulate better, the rooms stay cooler. So why are these materials not being used? And the answer is really what I said before, is because they're not as easily available and other people don't use them. So it's much more, more credible to follow the path of the many than the path of the few. So I was confronted with the enormous amount of waste that was implicit in the production process and also in the transportation process of these materials. You know, using enormous amounts of fossil fuels while producing steel as well as concrete, transporting them from usually central um, production facilities because most countries don't have a lot of steel industry or even importing them into the country uh, to the periphery or wherever the building sites are. There was the carbon footprint was just out of proportion to the quality of material I got. At the same time, there were these other materials like bamboo that did not emit any carbon. On the contrary, bamboo is capturing carbon during its production, which means growth. So in the end, the buildings have a negative carbon footprint without losing in functionality, without losing in strength, without losing in beauty at all. So here we come back to this question, why are they not being more commonly used? And I think this is why we are here for. We are here for making these materials more used in the mainstream construction and design industry. We're living in an age where social media promise ultimate connectedness. You can acquire hundreds or thousands of friends all over the world in a week or a couple of days. But I think the truth is also slowly sinking in that this kind of connectedness doesn't fill the emptiness, doesn't fill the space created by loneliness, that the coolness that is demanded of people these days has created. If we don't connect to our inside, then we will always feel empty. Nature has this ability to connect us because nature is inside and outside. If you look at something beautiful in nature, you will automatically smile. People see a beautiful flower, they smile. They see a beautiful bird dancing, they smile. They feel something, something is happening, something is connecting them that creates happiness. So we, are, so we think that nature is a tool that can be used to create spaces that connect us to these inner planes, that connect us to ourselves first 
so we can feel more stable, more happy, and then bring this happiness outside into the world. It is our duty as architects in our understanding to create spaces that connect, not that disconnect us from ourselves and the environment.